Well, are you ready to get into y'all's word today? I am as well. I want to invite you to open your Bibles with me to Numbers chapter 16. And we're going to begin with verse 1 in just a moment. And I've entitled this message today, The Rebellion of Korach and the Coming of the Lawless One. So let's get right into the text. And we need to be very careful as we read the text that we don't read too quickly because we'll miss important aspects of what is being said and what's being done in the body of this text. We need to be very careful as we read. All right. Numbers chapter 16, verse 1. And Korach, son of Itzhar, son of Kehath, son of Lewi, took both Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, and On, son of Peleth, sons of Reubain, and they rose up before Moshe with some of the children of Israel, 250 leaders of the congregation, called ones of the meeting, men of name. Another translation says men of renown. And so what is going on here? Well, Korach is leading up an insurrection of rebellion He is leading up a coup d'etat, a mutiny, so to speak. And he is wanting to overthrow the authority that exists, Moshe and Aharon. And he's wanting to establish himself as the new leader of Israel. And so he has leaders of the people that have gathered around him. And he has 250 men. They appear to be sons of Lewi or Levi or Levi. And they are wanting to take control of the priesthood. And so as we continue reading, you'll begin to see that. It says in verse 3, And they assembled against Moshe and against Aharon and said to them, Enough of you. In other words, we're done with you. We're through submitting to your leadership. We don't like the way that you are leading, and we are going to take control. It says here, for all the congregation is set apart, all of them, and Yah is in their midst. And what Korach is saying here is that he is the set apart one, and Yah is with him just as much as as he is with Moshe. So he's challenging his authority. And in essence, he wants to usurp his authority and become the new leader of Israel. He goes on to say, Why then do you lift up yourselves above the assembly of Yah? In other words, who do you think you are that you can lift yourself up as the leader of the assembly? And when Moshe heard... He fell on his face. He knew this was going to be offensive to Yah. He fell on his face. And he spoke to Korach and all his company saying, Tomorrow morning, Yah shall make known who is his and who is set apart and bring him near to him. In other words, we're going to leave it up to Yah. We're going to let Yah determine Who's the set apart one? Who the real leader of Israel is? And let him bring near to him the one whom he chooses. So Yah is going to choose the set apart one. Do this. Take fire holders, Korach, and all your company, and put fire in them, and put incense in them before Yah tomorrow. And it shall be that the one whom Yah chooses is the set apart one. And then Moshe goes on to say, enough of you, sons of Lewi. In other words, who do you think you are? You're making a very horrible mistake here in what you're doing. And so this reminds me, this idea of having those who are challenging authority to bring fire in their fire holders and put incense on it. Before, yeah, this reminds me of the strange fire incident that we read about in Leviticus chapter 10, beginning with verse 1, when the sons of Aharon, Nadab, and Abihu 
brought strange fire before Yah. It says, And Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Haron, each took his fire holder and put fire in it and put incense on it and brought strange fire before Yah, which he had not commanded them. And fire came out from Yah and consumed them. And they died before Yah. So this is a, a very, very trying situation. I mean, this is, this is going to be, it's not going to end well for these insurrectionists. And Moshe knew that. And Aharon knew that. And so let's continue reading. Numbers chapter 16 and verse 8. And Moshe said to Korach, Hear now, you sons of Lewi, is it little to you that the Elohim of Israel has separated you from the congregation of Israel to bring you near to himself to perform the service of the dwelling place of Yah and to stand before the congregation to serve them? And that he has brought you near to himself, you and all your brothers, the sons of Lewi, with you. So he's saying, is that a small thing? That's a great thing. That's something that you should value and something that you should appreciate. He goes on to say, yet you seek the priesthood as well. And this is very telling. Because what this tells us is that the sons of Lewi were wanting to take over the priesthood. They were wanting to subvert the priesthood. And they were wanting to become the priest, not just the servants to the priest. And so that's what was taking place here. Therefore, you and all your company are set against Yah and Aharon. What is he that you grumble against him? So you're not just grumbling against Aharon. You're grumbling against Yah. This is not just a rebellion against Aharon and his sons. This is a rebellion against Yah. And Moshe sent to call Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab. But they said, we are not coming up. So Moshe called these men to him, but they refused to come. Is it little that you have brought us up out of the land flowing with milk and honey to kill us in the wilderness that you would also seize total rule over us? So why is this happening? Why are Korach and these men performing this rebellion, involved in this insurrection? It's because they didn't like what Yah said to them after they refused to go into the land, when they didn't have belief, when they didn't trust Yah and they wouldn't go in and possess the land, after the spies came back. And 10 of the 12 spies had an evil report and said, we can't do it. We can't go in and possess it. The people are great and there's walled cities. And so they cried and, and they mourned and they wouldn't go up. And because they refused to go up, then Yah said, every person 20 years old and older is not going to go into the land. You're going to wander in this wilderness and you're going to die in this wilderness. And they didn't like that report from Yah. And so they're going to do something about it, they think. They think they're going to change that. And so they're rising up against the authority. And Korach is wanting to become the new leader. And he's wanting to give the priesthood to his brothers, the sons of Lewi. And then they can do whatever they want at that point. That's what they think. And so these men, Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, they said, we're not coming up. Notice what they said. Is it little that you have brought us up out of the land flowing with milk and honey? They're saying that Mitzrayim or Egypt was a land flowing with milk and honey. They'd already forgotten about the hard slavery. To kill us in the wilderness, that you would also seize total rule over us. In other words, we're not going to be ruled by you. Also, you have not brought us into a land flowing with milk and honey, nor given us inheritance of fields and vineyards. Would you bore out the eyes of these men? We are not coming up. In other words, you said you were going to lead us into a land flowing with 
milk and honey and give us an inheritance of fields and vineyards, but you didn't do it. But Moshe was doing exactly what Yah had commanded him to do. They wouldn't go up. They wouldn't go into the land. They wouldn't possess it. And now that they've gotten this verdict of guilty, of unbelief from Yah, and Yah has given them a punishment of not entering the land, but dying in the wilderness, now they're rebelling. Verse 15, And Moshe became very displeased and said to Yah, Do not respect their offering. I have not taken one donkey from them, nor have I done harm to any of them. In other words, he was saying, I haven't done anything against them. I haven't done anything to harm them. And now they're challenging the authority that you've given me. And he says, so don't respect their offering. Then Moshe said to Korach, Tomorrow you and all your company shall be there before Yah, you and they and Aharon, and take each one his fire holder, and you shall put incense in it, and let each one bring his fire holder before Yah, 250 fire holders, and you and Aharon, each one with his fire holder. So each one took his fire holder and put fire in it and laid incense on it and stood at the door of the tent of appointment with Moshe and Aharon. And Korach assembled all the congregation against them at the door of the tent of appointment. So notice they were able to to draw in all the congregation. Well, that's because the entire congregation, 20 years and older, were told they were going to die in the wilderness. They don't want to do that. That's not the idea that they have for the rest of their lives. Again, it says, And Korach assembled all the congregation against them at the door of the tent of appointment. Then the esteem of Yah appeared to all the congregation, and Yah spoke to Moshe and to Aharon, saying, Separate yourselves from the midst of this congregation, and let me consume them in a moment. But they fell on their faces and said, O El Elohim of the spirits of all flesh, when one man sins, are you wroth with all the congregation? And Yah spoke to Moshe, saying, Speak to the congregation, saying, Move away from around the tents of Korach, Dathan, and Abiram. So Moshe rose up and went to Dathan and Abiram, and the elders of Israel followed him, and he spoke to the congregation, saying, Please turn away from the tents of these wrong men. Do not touch whatever belongs to them, lest you be consumed in all their sins. In other words, clear away, back away, get away from these men because they're about to come under judgment. Then they moved away from around the tents of Korach, Dathan, and Abiram. And Dathan and Abiram came out and stood at the door of their tents with their wives and their sons and their little children. And Moshe said, by this you know that Yah has sent me to do all these works, that they are not from my own heart. In other words, I'm not doing them of my own will. I've come to do the will of the one who sent me. Does that remind you of something that Yeshua said? I've not come to do my own will, but to do the will of the one who sent me. Yeshua is the prophet like Moshe. Moshe said the same thing. Verse 29, if these die as all men do, or if they are visited as all men are visited, then Yah has not sent me. So if something remarkable doesn't happen, if they die as all men die, or if they're visited as all men are visited, then Yah has not sent me. But if Yah creates what is unheard of, and the earth opens up its mouth and swallows them up with all that belongs to them, and they go down alive into Sheol, 
then you shall know that these men have scorned Yah. And it came to be, as he ended speaking all these words, that the ground under them split apart, and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them up, and their households, and all the men with Korach, with all their goods. So they and all those with them went down alive into Sheol, and the earth closed over them, and they perished from the midst of the assembly. Well, this is a very interesting story. We're going to continue reading it, but I want to say at this point that Yeshua is the prophet like Moshe, and Moshe points to Yeshua. And if Moshe is the sent one and the righteous one that Yah puts his seal of approval on, then we know that Yeshua, also the son of Elohim, is the sent one and the righteous one. Moshe pointing to Yeshua. Then Korach, the unrighteous one, the disobedient, the rebellious one, the lawless one, points to the anti-Messiah. And so we see here that Korach and all those following him, those men who were with him in planning this insurrection, this rebellion, Dathan and Abiram, they and their entire households were swallowed up and they fell down into Sheol alive. And it's interesting that the anti-Messiah and the false prophet are going to be thrown into the lake of fire. And then look at verse 34. And all Israel who were round about them fled at their cry, for they said, lest the earth swallow us up. And a fire came out from Yah and consumed the 250 men who were offering incense. So Yah consumed these 250 men who were trying to take over the priesthood. He consumed them in fire. And Yah spoke to Moshe saying, Say to Eleazar, son of Aharon the priest, to pick up the fire holders out of the blaze, for they are set apart and scatter the fire some distance away, the fire holders of these men who sinned against their own lives. Let them be made into beaten plates as a covering for the slaughter place, because they brought them before Yah, therefore they are set apart, and let them become a sign, a reminder, to the children of Israel. And Eleazar, the priest, took the bronze fire holders, which those who were burned up had brought, and they were beaten out as a covering on the slaughter place, a remembrance to the children of Israel that no stranger who is not the seed of Aharon, should come near to offer incense before Yah and not be like Korach and his company, as Yah had said to him through Moshe. And so don't be like Korach and those rebellious ones who tried to take over Moshe's position of authority and the priesthood. And so these plates on the slaughter place are to be a sign to the people not to be rebellious in that regard. And then look at verse 41. But all the congregation of the children of Israel grumbled against Moshe and against Aharon on the next day, saying, You have killed the people of Yah. In other words, you've killed these men of renown, these these leaders, 
you've, you've taken their lives, you've killed them. And it came to be when the congregation assembled against Moshe and against Aharon that they turned toward the tent of appointment and see the cloud covered it and the esteem of Yah appeared. And so they are still assembling against Moshe and Aharon. And they're saying, you killed these men. And so Yah appears in the cloud over the tent of appointment. And Moshe and Aharon came before the tent of appointment. And Yah spoke to Moshe saying, Arise from amidst this congregation and let me consume them in a moment. And they fell on their faces. So Moshe said to Aharon, Take the fire holder and put fire in it from the slaughter place and lay incense on and go hurry to the congregation and make atonement for them for wrath has gone out from Yah the plague has begun and that reminds me of what's going to take place during the time of the tribulation when Yah pours out his wrath on the wicked of the earth plagues are going to come upon the wicked of the earth. And this is a picture of those events that are going to take place in the future. And Aharon took it as Moshe commanded and ran into the midst of the assembly and saw that the plague had begun among the people and he laid on the incense and made atonement for the people and stood between the dead and the living and the plague was stopped. And those who died in the plague were 14,700 besides those who died on account of Korach. Then Aharon returned to Moshe at the door of the tent of appointment, for the plague had stopped. And so what we see in this account is a picture of what's going to take place in the future. And Korach is a picture of the anti-Messiah. And the people who follow him are the wicked ones who will be judged during the time of the tribulation. And we see a correlation all throughout Scripture. We're going to see even more of that as we continue to read. So go with me over to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. We'll pick up with verse 1. And this is going to tell us that those things that happened in the Torah, things like what we just read, were written as an example for us. So we could learn from them, not to be wicked and unbelieving like they were. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1, For I do not wish you to be ignorant, brothers, this is Shaul writing, that all our fathers... We're under the cloud, the children of Israel. We're under the cloud, the cloud by day and the fire by night. And all passed through the sea. And all were immersed into Moshe in the cloud and in the sea. And all ate the same spiritual food. And all drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed. And the rock was... Messiah, so that rock where the water gushed out in the wilderness, that pictures Messiah. However, with most of them, Elohim was not well pleased, for they were laid low in the wilderness, and these became examples for us, so that we should not lust after evil. In other words, have a desire to do evil, as those indeed lusted, and do not become idolaters, as some of them, as it has been written, the people sat down to eat and to drink and stood up to play. That's when they were worshiping that golden calf. Neither should we commit whoring or sexual immorality, as some of them did. And in one day, 23,000 fell. Neither let us try Messiah, as some of them also tried and were destroyed by serpents, neither grumble, as some of them also grumbled, and were destroyed by the destroyer, and all these came upon them as examples, 
and they were written as a warning to us on whom the ends of the ages have come. We are not to live like they did. We are not to do these things that caused their destruction. Verse 12, so that he who thinks he stands, let him take heed lest he fall. In other words, you be careful. You guard yourself lest you fall into the same things, these wicked actions that these men took. And then verse 13 is a word of encouragement to us. No trial has overtaken you except such as is common to man. And Elohim is trustworthy who shall not allow you to be tried beyond what you are able, but with the trial shall also make the way of escape, enabling you to bear it. In other words, we should always look for the way of escape so we don't follow in the footsteps of these wicked men. We need to look for and recognize the way of escape that Yah has given us so that we can walk righteously in the ways of Yah. Let's look at 2 Timothy chapter 3, starting with verse 1. And this is a word concerning the last days. It says, But know this, that in the last days hard times shall come. Another translation says, Perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of self. When we read through this, think about Korach and those men. Men shall be lovers of self, lovers of silver, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, thankless, wrongdoers, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, fierce, haters of good, betrayers, reckless, puffed up, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of Elohim, having a form of reverence but denying its power. In other words, being religious but denying the power of Elohim. And turn away from these. For among them are those who creep into households and captivate silly women. Another translation says gullible women loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. It's like they're always having a study, but they are never able to grasp the knowledge of the truth. And as Yohaneh and Mamre opposed Moshe, so do these also oppose the truth. Now, Yohaneh and Mamre, it's said, were the Egyptian magicians who opposed Moshe in Egypt when Moshe and Aharon were there speaking to Paro, to Pharaoh, saying, let my people go, speaking for Yah, and doing signs. And then these magicians, they did false signs for a while. And then they were no longer able to do signs that appeared to be these miracles that Moshe and Aharon were doing. And so they were found out that they weren't as powerful as they were proposing that they were, as they were pretending to be. It says, and as Yohaneh and Mamre oppose Moshe, so do these also oppose the truth. Talking about these wicked men that were described here in 2 Timothy chapter 3. Men of corrupt minds found worthless concerning the belief, but they shall not go on further, for their folly shall be obvious to all, as also that of those men became, speaking of Yohane and Mamre. But you did closely follow my teaching, the way of life, the purpose, the belief, the patience, the love, the endurance, the persecutions, the sufferings, which came to me at Antioch and at Iconion and at Lustra, 
what persecutions I bore. Yet out of them all the Master delivered me. And indeed all those wishing to live reverently in Messiah Yeshua shall be persecuted. But evil men like Korach and impostors shall go on to the worse, leading astray and being led astray. But you stay in what you have learned and trusted, having known from whom you have learned and that from a babe you have known the set-apart scriptures, which are able to make you wise for deliverance through belief in Messiah Yeshua. All scripture is breathed out by Elohim and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for setting straight, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of Elohim might be fitted, equipped for every good work. And so we are charged to be sober, to watch, to be careful about these wicked men who are like Korach, and we are to stay away from those people and follow in what we've been taught and in the word of Elohim. 2 Timothy chapter 4, beginning with verse 1, In the sight of Elohim and the Master Yeshua Messiah, who shall judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his reign, I earnestly charge you, proclaim the word. Be urgent in season, out of season. Convict, warn, appeal with all patience and teaching. For there shall be a time when they shall not bear sound teaching. In other words, they don't want to hear it. They didn't want to hear what Moshe had to say. And this is the prophecy that there's coming a time. And I believe we're in that time now. That people are not going to want to hear sound teaching. But according to their own desires, they shall heap up for themselves teachers, tickling the ear. And they shall indeed turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to myths. Well, you know, when the spies came back and the ten spies had the evil report and they said, we can't go in. The people of the land are too strong for us. They're too great. And there's walled cities. They had all these excuses about why they couldn't possess the land. Then they said, let us raise up a leader who will take us back to Mitzrayim, back to Egypt. And that's exactly what was going on with Korah. He was trying to become the new leader. And so people are always trying to find someone who will tell them what they want to hear. And we're living in days where people don't want to hear the truth. And so they're looking for teachers who will tell them what they want to hear, who will tickle, so to speak, their itching ears. And the scripture says, they shall indeed turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to myths. But it goes on to say, but you be sober in all matters, suffer hardships, do the work of an evangelist, accomplish your service completely. Now let's continue reading what we see here in the writings of the emissaries relates to this passage in the Torah that we read about Korach and those sons of Lewi and the others who joined in in that rebellion of theirs. We see it all throughout the writings of the emissaries, that that dynamic is going to continue and even grow worse. We see here in Jude, beginning with the third verse, there's only one chapter in Jude, it says, Beloved ones, making all haste to write to you concerning our common deliverance, I felt the necessity to write to you, urging you to earnestly contend for the belief which was once for all delivered to the set-apart ones. He said, you got to fight for your belief. For certain men have slipped in, whose judgment 
was written about long ago, wicked ones perverting the favor of our Elohim for indecency and denying the only master Yah and our master Yeshua Messiah. But I intend to remind you, though you once knew this, that Yah, having saved a people out of the land of Mitzrayim, afterward destroyed those who did not believe. It's all about belief. And the messengers who did not keep their own principality, but left their own dwelling, he has kept in everlasting shackles under darkness for the judgment of the great day. And so the Lewites should have been happy with the service that they had been given, but instead they wanted to leave that and they wanted to take the priesthood over altogether. Even as Sidon and Amorah and the cities around them in a similar way to these, having given themselves over to whoring and gone after strange flesh, are set forth as an example, undergoing judicial punishment of everlasting fire. In the same way, indeed, these dreamers defile the flesh and reject authority. There it is again. And speak evil of esteemed ones. They were speaking evil of Moshe and Aharon in the wilderness. Verse 11. Woe to them because they have gone in the way of Cain, of Cain, and gave themselves to the delusion of Bilam for a reward of Balaam. Again, he was receiving payment to curse the children of Israel and ended up blessing them. And perished in the rebellion of Korach. So we see another reference to what we just read in the Torah. These are rocky reefs in your love feasts. Feasting with you, feeding themselves without fear. Waterless clouds, borne about by the winds. Late autumn trees, without fruit. Twice dead, pulled up by the roots. Wild waves of the sea, foaming up their own shame, straying stars for whom blackness of darkness is kept forever. And Hanok, or Enoch, the seventh from Adam, also prophesied of these, saying, See, Yah comes with his myriads of set-apart ones to execute judgment on all, to punish all who are wicked among them concerning all their wicked works, which they have committed in a wicked way, and concerning all the harsh words which wicked sinners have spoken against him. And of course, in the example in Torah, they were speaking harsh words against Moshe and Aharon. They are grumblers, complainers, who walk according to their own lusts, and their mouth speaks proudly, admiring faces of others. In other words, giving flattery for gain, for the sake of gain. But you, beloved ones, remember the words spoken before by the emissaries of our Master Yeshua, Messiah, because they told you that there would be mockers in the last time who would walk according to their own wicked lust. There it is, mockers in the last time. Who would walk according to their own wicked lust. These are the ones who cause divisions, dividing the body. Not having the Spirit, the Spirit of Yah, but you, beloved ones, building yourselves up on your most set-apart belief, praying in the set-apart Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of Elohim, looking for the compassion of our Master Yeshua Messiah unto everlasting life, and show compassion towards some who are doubting, but others save with fear, snatching them out of the fire, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh, and to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his esteem with exceeding joy to the only wise Elohim, our Savior, be esteem and greatness and might and authority both now and forever. Amen. And then I want to continue to tie in this idea that Korach pictures the anti-Messiah of the tribulation period. Let's look at 1 John chapter 2 and pick up with verse 18. It says, Little children, it is the last hour, and as you 
have heard that the anti-Messiah is coming. Even now, many anti-Messiahs have come. This is how we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have stayed with us. But in order that it might be made manifest that none of them were of us. And so this reminds me, this idea of there being divisions and people went out from among the body and they knew that they were anti-Messiahs because they left and went their own way. And that's exactly what the people wanted to do when they heard the evil report of the ten spies. And they didn't have belief. and They didn't trust Yah. And they wouldn't go into the land. They said, let us raise up a, a leader who will lead us back to Mitzrayim. In other words, let us depart. Let us divide this body and, and go our own way. And that's exactly what was happening in, in this period. Yochanan was writing about this, that these people left. They were anti-Messiahs. They didn't continue to walk in the ways of truth, but they went their own way. And so we see in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, beginning with verse 1, this passage is all about the coming of the lawless one, the coming of the anti-Messiah during the tribulation period or at the time of the tribulation period, at the time of the end of the age. And of course, Korach pictures the anti-Messiah. Let's read about it here in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, beginning with verse 1. As to the coming of our Master Yeshua Messiah and our gathering together to Him, we ask you, brothers, not to become easily unsettled in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if from us, as if the day of Yah has come. And so this is Shaul writing, and he is saying that they are not to be easily unsettled in their minds or troubled by spirit, a deceptive spirit speaking, or by word, something someone has said, or by a letter, a forgery, as if it was from Shaul, that the day of Yah had already come. Verse 3, let no one deceive you in any way because the falling away is to come first. So what is to come first? The conclusion of the falling away. The falling away is when those who profess to be believers fall away from the truth. Now that's been happening now from the first century, but it has to be completed. And so the falling away is to be completed. When the falling away is completed, then the man of lawlessness is revealed. So let's read the verse again. Let no one deceive you in any way because the falling away is to come first. And the man of lawlessness is to be revealed, the son of destruction, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called Elohim or that is worshipped so that he sits as Elohim in the, this translation says, dwelling place of Elohim, a better rendering would be the rebuilt temple, showing himself that he is Elohim. And so the falling away is going to take place, this dynamic that is head up by Hasatan and demon forces to create an environment of lawlessness into which the anti-Messiah can rise. People who are proclaiming to be followers of the truth, followers of Yeshua, are going to leave the way of truth and they are going to depart from the truth. They're going to fall away. And when that dynamic has been completed, then the anti-Messiah is going to rise up in this environment of lawlessness and he's going to be then accepted and approved of by all of the lawless people of the world. Notice it says in verse 4, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called Elohim. Now this is exactly what Korach did. I don't know if you realize this, but the scripture says, this is Yah speaking, Yah told Moshe, I'm going to make you an Elohim to Paro. And in another place he says, I'm going to make you an Elohim to Aharon. And so when 
Korach opposed Moshe, in essence, he was opposing a little e Elohim. And so we see here, this is talking about the ultimate anti-Messiah that's going to come after the falling away has been completed. And it says that he opposes and exalts himself above all that is called Elohim, or that is worshipped. Do you not remember that I told you this while I was still with you? And now you know what restrains for him to be revealed in his time. What restrains? There's a what that restrains and there's a who who restrains. Okay, The what that restrains is the falling away must come first. And then it says for him to be revealed in his time. That's talking about the animosite. For the secret of lawlessness is already at work. It's been at work since the first century. Creating that environment of lawlessness. And it will be completed sometime in the future. And then the anti-Messiah will rise up within that context of lawlessness. It says in verse 8, And then the lawless one shall be revealed. In other words, you're going to see him whom the master shall consume with the spirit or the breath of his mouth and bring to naught with the manifestation of his coming. So there's going to be a judgment on the anti-Messiah and on the false prophet and on all of those people on the earth who follow the anti-Messiah, who, who take his mark, who worship the beast. All of the wicked people of the earth will be judged and the Master Yeshua Messiah is going to return and he's going to consume the anti-Messiah with the breath of his mouth and bring to naught the anti-Messiah with the manifestation of his coming. It says the coming of the lawless one, the disobedient one, the rebellious one is according to the working of Satan with all power and signs and wonders of falsehood and with all deceit of unrighteousness and those perishing. In other words, he's going to deceive people to unrighteousness. He's going to deceive them to participate in unrighteousness, to follow his unrighteous ways. And it says those people who follow in his unrighteous ways are going to perish because they did not receive the love of the truth. That is so important. How is a person to be saved. You believe upon Yeshua. You receive the want to heart when you submit yourself to water immersion. You have your heart circumcised. You receive the want to, I want to obey heart. Then you receive the indwelling set apart spirit of Yah. That's the power to be obedient. And you have a love of the truth. You love the truth. And you live in the truth and you seek out the truth and you walk in the truth. It says because they did not receive the love of the truth in order for them to be saved. And for this reason, Elohim sends them a working of delusion for them to believe the falsehood. So if you don't love the truth and you love what's false and you're living in a delusion, at some point, Yah is just going to turn you over to that delusion. He's going to give you a working of delusion. And you're just going to believe the falsehood. And at that point, then there's no hope for you. You just believe what's false. Verse 12. In order that all should be judged who did not believe the truth, but have delighted in the unrighteousness. But we ought to give thanks to Elohim always for you, brothers. Beloved by the Master, because Elohim from the beginning chose you to be saved in set apartness of spirit and belief in the truth unto which he called you by our good news for the obtaining of the esteem of our Master Yeshua Messiah. So then, brothers, stand fast and hold the traditions which you were taught, whether by word or or by our letter and our master, Yeshua Messiah himself. 
and our Elohim and Father who has loved us and given us everlasting encouragement and good expectation or good hope through favor encourage your hearts and establish you in every good word and work hallelujah and then i want to end with this passage in first thessalonians chapter 5 beginning with verse 1 it says now brothers as to the times and the seasons you do not need to be written to for you yourselves know very well that the day of yah comes as a thief in the night for when they say not when we believers say but when they the wicked people of the world say peace and safety then suddenly destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman and they shall not escape but you in contrast to the them and the they but you brothers are not in darkness so that this day should overtake you as a thief for you are all sons of light and sons of the day sons of revelation we have the spirit of yah dwelling in us giving us revelation and leading us we are not of the night nor of darkness so then we should not sleep as others do but we should watch and be sober for those who sleep sleep at night and those who get drunk are drunk at night but we who are of the day should be sober putting on the breastplate of belief and love and as a helmet the expectation of deliverance we are expecting to be delivered i'm not talking about the pre-tribulation rapture that's not scriptural i'm talking about the fact that we're walking in the ways of yah yah has placed his spirit within us we're being led by yah through his spirit and we have every expectation that he is going to give us what we need to be able to navigate through the difficult days that are ahead of us. And if it is Yah's choice that we, by our death during the tribulation period, exalt him and give him great esteem, so be it. We have living favor. We have dying favor. But our expectation is for deliverance. It's for deliverance. And we have that promise in the scripture that we can expect to be delivered. And so it says in verse 9, Because Elohim did not appoint us to wrath, that's the wrath of Elohim, but to obtain deliverance through our master Yeshua Messiah, who died for us, so that we, whether awake or asleep, whether we're living or whether we've died, should live together with him, Therefore, encourage one another and build up one another as indeed you do. And so that's what this message is all about. It's encouraging you in the belief to stand strong, to trust Yah, to walk in the truth, to walk in His ways, and do not become like Korach and those wicked men and those 250 men who brought that fire in their fire holders with incense before Yah, and they were consumed in the fire of Yah because of their wickedness. Do not be like these that have been prophesied concerning by the writers of the what's called the second writings or the writings of the emissaries. But instead, stand fast in the truth. We see two camps in this world the camp of the righteous Moshe was among the righteous Moshe points to Yeshua and the camp of the lawless and Korach was lawless and he points to anti messiah so I want to encourage you there's only two camps which camp do you want to be in I want to be in the camp of the righteous I want to follow Yeshua as he has charged us to follow me and why would I follow him? Because he's the only one who made it to the right hand of the Father. And that's where I want to be. I want to be with the Father, and I want to dwell with Yeshua throughout the endless ages of eternity. Hallelujah.